Welcome back, everybody, to a fistful of tangos, and don't worry, I will get you video before the game actually begins. Don't kill me. Fire LD. Fire gods. Fire somebody. All right, we have video. Don't strangle me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shut up already. Go home, you're drunk. All right, on the dire side, we have no Tidehunters. S4, the solo mid player for that team. Uh, as for on the Radiant side, we have Korok playing for Team Liquid. Korok. Uh, and Team Liquid in general, we've seen them switching up the roles quite a bit, but I'd say more often than not, it's Korok going mid. Sometimes we see Bulba there, uh, and once in a while, I think we've seen TC, but Korok, of course, from Quantic, formerly now of Team Liquid, has bounced around quite a bit, has been an up-and-coming player. The same for no, no Tide Hunters S4. Really, both of these players have been uh, kind of new faces to the Dota 2 scene. Now, of course... Uh, at least I know with Korok, he's played competitively for a while, but he switched to Heroes of New Earth, came back to Dota with, with the advent of Dota 2. And as for S4, at least for me, he's a new face. Maybe he's been playing for years at the top levels, and I just haven't heard of the guy. But as far as I know, S4, pretty much a new up-and-comer. So it should be an exciting match uh, between these two. And it looks like we have a bit of a prolonged pause. So it's a good time to check out our brackets and talk about some of the other matches coming up here today. Uh, should be some exciting games. Funic versus Sing Sing is going to be our next best out of three. Uh, and don't worry, I'll go back inside the game when the game actually resumes. It looks like we should be ready to go. Fantastic. So Funic versus Sing Sing is coming up later today. But enough about that for now. We're back inside the game. So we are going to have S4 going for a lot of early stats. Saving a little bit for the bottle, 100 gold, but not too much. And is going to use the courier potentially to scout. Let's see what he does. Hopefully he does that thing where you just leave it here in the trees. It's a much safer courier scout than sending it over here where you're just hoping you, the enemy hero doesn't come and gank it. Uh, as for Korok, what is he doing? Very similar build, but has gone for a little bit extra regen with double tango and salve and still saving 100 gold for the bottle. He is not using that courier to scout. Speaking of which, you can obviously judge a player's skill by their courier. And S4, I must say... You are lacking skill. <laughs> S4 lurking towards that top rune. Korok sitting mid. We're waiting for this game to get underway, guys. Who's your money on? I gotta say, if pressed to bet, I felt like Korok was not on his best form the last time we saw him. So I'm gonna have to give a slight edge to S4. But it depends. I could see this one going either way. I think both these players are quite evenly matched. It should be a pretty close series overall. If it comes down to that 1v1 Shadow Fiend mid, then all bets are really off. That is, it's such, it's such a ridiculous mode with no items, no runes. But hey, it's the fairest thing we can come up with for 1v1 mid before the same hero mode, which they just implemented, which we're very excited to be using in the future. And oh, by the way, we hear all your suggestions as far as the 5v5 Pudge mid, and for the most part, we think they're amazing. Wow, is he actually blocking with the Courier? Oh, that's pretty sick. Oh boy. Not the best block in the world, but blocking with that courier is actually very, very difficult. So props to him for doing it. As far as going to get the double damage rune. And this is going to the first time we've actually seen a player start with a rune in this tournament. And this has to be a huge advantage for him. Double damage rune already picked up. Queen of Pain has slightly better last hitting without the double damage in play. I mean, even despite the base damage. The auto attack of Puck is just a little bit worse than Queen of Pain's. But with the DD rune, yeah, good luck. As far as hasn't opted for any a point in phase shift to level 1. He actually went for orb. Maybe hoping he could catch Korok coming to the rune and chase him down. But obviously, you'd much prefer to have that phase shift here to dodge the Shadow Strikes. And I'm also interested to see that Korok is going for Shadow Strike build. Because we've seen a lot of players just... We saw Sing Sing skipped it entirely. Even skipped leveling up Blink just to mass stats on the Queen of Pain side of this matchup. Granted, that's Sing Sing. But you can see the power of Queen of Pain. Even when Puck starts with a double damage rune, Queen of Pain is just still able to wail away at him. A little bit later. Nice phase shift dodge there by S4. Ensuring that his salve will continue to go. And Korok just continuing to last hit mid, fighting with S4. This game, of course, is only game one for everyone tuning in. No matter what happens, we'll go to a game two where the players switch sides, and then it will be a deciding best of three. As far as last hits go, still quite even. Five to four versus three to two. Nothing too bad for either player. A slight edge for S4. That double damage at the early levels does make a difference. But Korok should really be able to catch up here, and the bottle coming out in one creep for S4, a bit longer for Korok. This actually does make a bit of a difference because that next rune is spawning, so S4 is going to be the one more likely to contest it. We'll see. There's no vision for Korok. Nobody using their courier to scout just yet. 
Obviously, if you're using that courier to scout, your bottle will be delayed. So generally something we only see a little bit later on. And the rune is going to be bottom, and it's a regen. Let's see who goes for it first. Korok doesn't really need this regen, but he doesn't know it's the regen, of course. And if it's a haste or a double damage, you don't really want to give it up to your opponent. You'd see something S4 is doing, which a lot of newer players tend not to do, is whenever you have nothing better to do, like if your creeps are under the enemy tower, if you're a suicide laner and your lane's pushing, go body block the creeps, because eventually it will pull the lane back. Oh, the courier. Korok could go for the courier. Huge missed micro from S4. S4. Oh, no. You were showing off your micro skills earlier. Body blocking with the courier. And now you just forget about it. Throws it away. And the worst part is that was his bottle. It has not been delivered yet. That might just completely rip this game apart. Really, S4 should be at a massive disadvantage. Now, Korok should be able to punish this. Let's see how aggressive he gets. He may at the very least be able to force S4. Back to Fountain. And sure, you can go back to Fountain, but he can't grab that bottle while he's there. It's dead on the Courier. It's dead for another two and a half minutes. Croc strikes a huge blow directly at the heart of S4. Oh boy. Even Couriers are not safe to walk the streets of Beyond the Summit. Oh, if it's full of tangos. Nothing is safe. Nothing is sacred. Korok showing that he has no rules when it comes down to it. No mercy for the weak. And I gotta say, that was a weak micro from S4. <laughs> it does happen. It does happen. Bottle comes out. As far as last hitting goes, still very even. And it's gonna be hard for Korok to actually kill S4. But what he can do is trade blows, be a little bit more aggressive, and then use the fact that he already has his bottle to his advantage. Out rune control Korok a bit. And then try to... Uh, or out, out rune control S4 by a little bit, I should say. And then try to basically gain an advantage that way. Korok is now gonna go pick up that regen rune bottom. As for S4... No bottle. The boots are coming soon, though. I guess the good news is he'll have his boots and his bottle by the time the courier respawns. So at least he doesn't have to send it out once and then right back for the boots and get them both at once. But unfortunately, this is going to force a fountain trip, and he was actually ahead in last hits. Uh, you'd rather have those three last hits than three denies, generally, in 1v1. Especially since some of those some of the denies are coming when heroes are backing off in the lane anyway, so it doesn't always affect them because they weren't getting that experience to begin with. It's sort of, it's like, it's like collecting points in garbage time in basketball, basically, <laughs> in some cases. So, Korok now going to be focused on just out, route, out lane controlling a little bit. He actually got the double spawn bottom, the illusion rune, as well as the regen. And here comes S4, back to the game. Still no bottle, though. The courier's respawning soon. It's respawning soon, but not quite yet. Like it is Korok. Oh, S4 dodges the Shadow Strike. If he didn't dodge that, Korok would have gone for the kill. He's got the regen rune. That was close. S4 lurking at his tower, praying for that courier to respawn. Any time now, really, would be fine. It's still dead. It's gotta be coming soon. Blinking in his Korok, going on S4, bringing him down low. The Courier is coming back, like, in the next 30 seconds or so. Unfortunately, the damage really already has been done. Korok's gotten two runes. He's dominated in the lane now. You can just see what a difference it makes as far as last hits go. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Korok blinking in, there's your scream. S4 takes a lot of damage, the Sonic Wave as well. Is he gonna take down to the poison? He has nothing to regen through this. How many more ticks are there? I think there's two or three, there's their bottle. And now he will be able to bottle up in between those ticks if needed, but with the phase shift, he'll be okay. He was damn low. And Korok is gonna get this rune, but almost at the expense of his own life. Salving up as well as bottling up. Oh boy. Those creeps on a rampage. He really wanted to control that rune. Came at a heavy price. Lost almost all his health to the creeps. But he did not know S4 wasn't going to be able to fight him for it. So not afraid to go down there even at low HP. Obviously S4 was too low to contest the rune anymore. So Korok up to another 1300 gold. Starting to pull back here. Still slightly ahead when it comes to CS. Going on to S4 again with the double damage rune. But because S4 has those boots, he's not an easy kill. Can't just run him down. This is one of those matchups that can tend to drag on a touch. The Queen of Pain versus Puck. Well, we've seen it before. No rest for the players. They must grind onwards. Remember, tournament lives at stake, pride at stake. Loser of this best out of three goes home. There's no, there's no, win there's no losers losers bracket. This is double elimination, not that clowny triple elimination that 
uh, that Skosu was played out in for the Asia Madness tournament, which I actually really want to see. Triple elimination sounds like it would be pretty entertaining. If not, a, a bit ridiculous, sure, but still pretty entertaining in spite of that. Neither player opting for wards just yet. Interesting, again, to see. Still, it's really only fear in this tournament that's favored frequent ward purchases on almost every side of his matchups. Not every single one, but the majority. And Korok back to the fountain for him. He's got a TP scroll. He's got his treads up. He is going to have the edge when it comes to trading blows with S4. And with no kills being claimed yet, no towers being claimed yet, it really is just those auto attacks, uh, or those last hits that... Those auto attacks. <laughs> those last hits that make the difference. But a single first blood can completely turn this game. Korok loses about 200 gold. S4 gains another 400 or so. And suddenly, we have ourselves a ball game. But right now... Croc is definitely winning this. If the game goes late enough, slowly but surely, that farm advantage just means you're not going to die to them ever, even if they hit the perfect combo. Oh, S4, he's already used the phase shift. He didn't actually dodge anything, but the shadow strike is there. Korok's dropping low. And Korok doesn't want to break the tether. Wisely, I feel, after we saw what happened to Merlini yesterday. Croc jumps in again. He's got the old S4. I gotta dodge it. Korok waiting forever in a day. S4, even thinking about going in, he gets the creeps aggroed onto Korok. Do the creeps actually see him? They don't, so they'll back off. Korok, playing with fire here. But fountain trip number two in the end goes the way of the puck. There's no rune top. The rune has spawned bottom. It's an illusion rune. Gotta say, Korok not having the best rune luck as far as which runes he gets at which time. He really would like to have a haste earlier when he had some killing opportunities and... You know, obviously a regen now would be just dandy, but hey, he's getting what he's getting. And what's he got on the courier? Probably that magic wand. Nope, no wand yet, just the bracer. Wand's actually a pretty good investment versus Puck, because he tends to spam that phase shift, and it's no mana cost to him, but you get a little bit of regen every time that he uses it. Uh, so I'm surprised he hasn't gone for the wand yet, but we'll see. He'll most likely go back for it next. And now back to base. Just wants to survive through that initial burst. And, again, we have seen with this matchup that Puck has that big killing power. If you get caught under tower, or you're forced to blink out of the Dream Coil, and you get the damage from it again, it really does hurt. Uh, or the double stun, as well as the damage from breaking it, I mean. Especially, if you factor that in with some creep auto attacks, maybe the tower hitting the other the enemy here a few times, Puck's dodging some of your damage with phase shift. And even when Queen of Pain's quite far ahead when it comes to items, she can still give up a kill. And ultimately, if you give a blood kill, then S4 is right back in this game. It is still a slight lead for Korok, but again, nothing insurmountable. He blinks forward, but S4 is going to orb away. I think he'll port to it. Yeah, there you go. Rune's about to spawn. What is it going to be? No, Korok's not even going for the rune. Just wants to go in on S4, who's got the silence, has the dream coil, needs the double dream coil. First blood to Korok, but can't afford to give up this counter kill. And he will blinks out right as the dream coil ends. Not breaking a tether, Radiant's or he would have died. And now, you can see that one bracer making all the difference. So if you want to be aggressive fight under the tower, and you don't have a bunch of wand charges acquired, or, or stick charges acquired, then the bracer, the better way to go. Korok strikes first. But remember, he needs three, he needs two kills or two towers. As for the puck, one kill and he's right back in this game. But now it gets a lot harder when it comes to net worth. Down by 1600, almost being doubled by Korok. With only an 11 CS advantage and a first blood, it just shows you how much that first blood really adds up to. In the grander scheme of a 5v5, a first blood, even between 1v1 mid, not always a game decider, not necessarily the biggest deal in the world, but in this 1v1 mid, first blood is everything. It's the whole kit and caboodle. Very difficult to come back from. There's your blinking by Cork. He is leveling up his... Oh, S4 has not seen this double damage rune, or has, but it's just going to orb away. Thought he was going to man fight there, and you do not want to man fight a, a co-op out of your tower range. Oh, boy. S4. Playing with fire here. Don't scratch Korok. He might bite. He's thinking about it. There's your dream coil. There's your orb. But Korok's just going to man fight his way to victory. And game one of this best of three goes to Korok. I gotta say, a little